If you're struggling to grow on Instagram, the issue might not be you. Hear me out. And it might in fact be the platform you're using. You see, Reels were introduced to Instagram first back in 2019. And when you posted one, regardless of the content, whether it was amazing movie level production or whether it was very basic, filmed on your selfie camera with awful lighting and average substance, didn't matter, it would do well. If you put some good effort into it, you could very easily get 50, 100, 200,000 views on a reel and this is because as with any new feature it got a big boost in the algorithm the way it works with social media is when a platform introduces a new feature they're doing it because they think it will keep people on the platform longer whether it's introducing stories introducing carousels introducing reels introducing features to these types of content they are doing it because they think it will keep people on the platform longer and anytime a feature a type of content or an account keeps people on the platform longer, they will boost it in the algorithm. So if they are adding a new feature, they are gonna assume it'll keep people on the platform longer and they will use content with that feature and show it to more people. Couple this up with the fact that when Reels were first introduced, obviously no one was creating Reels. So you had on one side this huge amount of reach that was there for the taking and on the other side you had very few people creating reels taking that and so with some basic maths if you've got a massive amount of reach and a small amount of people competing for it you are going to get a ton of reach on your content regardless now over the three years since that was first introduced things have changed more and more people have been creating reels this is due to people becoming familiar with the platform, getting comfortable creating reels, and every single guru you've ever heard of going on about the fact that if you don't post reels, it's impossible to grow. Reels are the only solution, you gotta dance which by the way is ridiculous and false, but a lot of people said it. So all of a sudden, you still had this massive amount of reach, but now on the other side of the equation, you've got a massive amount of people competing for that reach, literally tens of millions of people. And so all of a sudden, the amount of reach that you would get on your reels decreases massively. And only the very best, most engaging content from creators who are following every single guideline and have never done anything wrong are the only ones who are getting pushed which makes sense if tens of millions of people are creating reels and instagram only has a limited amount of places that they can push these reels they're of course going to only select the best most politically correct ones to show and now this is where youtube steps in for two big reasons and you want to stick around listen to both and then implement it along with a secret instagram strategy i'll show you at the end now if you look at the life cycle of youtube shorts on the other hand they've been around for about half as long as instagram reels they've been going for about 18 months in the us so naturally being earlier on in the cycle you're going to get more reach because less people will be using them heck i haven't even posted any youtube shorts until tomorrow at the time of recording this it'll be posted by the time you watch this so now you're gonna fuck with time but I haven't posted any yet. On my personal channel, clients, we've definitely been posting them. Now, couple up the fact that YouTube Shorts are newer and less saturated than Instagram Reels. YouTube also has a lot less of what I like to call casual creators. On Instagram, a normal person, quote unquote, who has no aspirations of being an influencer, will still be posting content to their friends. They might create a reel with the recap of their 2022. That was pretty popular. They might show what they're doing with their workouts, with their home cooking. They might tell a few jokes, whatever. They're likely to post content. Whereas on YouTube, most people do not have a channel. Most people do not create content. Now to back this up with numbers, Instagram has got over 2 billion active users. And according to HubSpot, the average user on Instagram posts four feed posts per week with businesses posting a little bit more. Whereas on YouTube, there is over 2.6 billion users, so more users, however, there are only 51 million channels and only 26 million videos being uploaded per week, which works out to be half a video per week or one video every second week. So if you're gonna compare YouTube Shorts to Instagram Reels on the other hand, YouTube has got more active users. However, only about 2% of those users are actually creating content. And of those who do post content, it is 
eight times more common on Instagram than on YouTube or eight times more frequent, which is unreal when you think about the amount of content being posted on Instagram versus YouTube. Now, not only is that potential for reach on YouTube awesome, there's something else, real in-depth analytics. And I mean real with an A, not with two E's. You see, when it comes to Instagram Reels, two E's, you don't have analytics. With YouTube, I can jump into my dashboard take a look at a short that I've posted for a client and I can see exactly how long that short is. I can see exactly what percentage of the short people watch on average. And then I can go through and look at a retention graph which shows me where people clicked off, how many percent of people were still watching at this point versus this point. And then you can play the clips where people clicked off or rewatched to find out what is engaging for people. Then you can go ahead and make a few edits so that your reel becomes more engaging or your short becomes more engaging and you've got a better piece of content that's more interesting, more engaging and will grow your audience faster. I've said it over and over again that watch time is one of the most important factors when it comes to your Instagram reels. However, it's pretty hard to have data to back up how well one of them is performing versus another, where people click off, where people leave. So what smart creators will go ahead and do is they will post their short form content to YouTube first as a short. Then give it a few days, dive through the analytics, find out what they did well, what they did wrong, what they can improve on, what they can edit out, and then take that edited short, which is even more engaging, more interesting, with a better hook, and they post it to Instagram. With this increased watch time, it leads to the piece of content getting more engagement and getting pushed out to more new people, which helps grow the audience. And this done consistently will compound for you because when one of your reels gets more reach, the next time you post, you're gonna get a slight boost in the algorithm. And then assuming you follow the same system post after post so that everything you post is top tier, engaging and interesting, things will grow like wildfire. This compounding effect, as I like to call it, is the main reason why on my new page at Cleverpreneur, everything we post gets pushed in the algorithm. You see, if I pull up my phone here, we can look through my recent content, look at the insights and see this post, two thirds of the reach were to non-followers. This post here, two thirds of the reach, non-followers. This post here, 90% of the reach, non-followers. And if we scroll down, we'll see the majority. This one might be different because it was a collab, but still, most of it, non-followers. And then that was a collab again. This one here, 90% non-followers. So our content constantly gets pushed in the algorithm because we've created great content, built trust, and then all we have to do is just keep maintaining that positive reputation we have in the algorithm. And so assuming I don't mess this up by posting just boring content or failing to do the fundamentals of good hook, interesting content, and a strong community, then it's gonna grow. And every time I post, I'll gain 200 to 1,000 to 2,000 new followers for every single post. Also making the assumption that I'm not gonna do something silly and break the community guidelines. So to wrap up this video and give you the honest truth, I'm not telling you to stop posting on Instagram. Despite the title, I did have to use a little bit of clickbait in the title to get your attention to give you a message that you needed to hear. I did it for your own good. Sorry, but I think you'll thank me. I'm saying you need to use YouTube to leverage what tools it gives you to grow an audience on a second platform whilst also allowing you to grow considerably faster on Instagram. And before you sit there and say, it will take too much time, it will take too much effort, and I can't do it, I'm already posting this amount of times on Instagram, it won't. If you do it the right way, with the right systems in place, the same systems I use with my students and clients, it'll take maybe an extra 20% of time per week than just posting on Instagram. But I promise you, it will lift your results on the platform by way more than 20%, as well as build you a whole nother audience on a separate platform to drive twice as much, three times as much traffic to your offer by having two strong platforms instead of one. If you're serious about building an audience as a creator, as a business owner, as a coach, consultant, etc., and you want that help, book a call with me down below. We'll see how we can best help you. Aside from that, check out the rest of my content on my channel. It's here to help you, and I will see you in the next one.